Dr. Santosh Horawar, the renowned oculoplastic surgeon, to enlighten us on the topic of oncological principles to augment the prognosis. The oncological principles to optimize outcome. Because of lack of time, I'll be speaking on eyelid and orbital tumors. Manage them appropriately. As far as the ocular surface tumors are concerned, the oncological principles are not to use topical therapy when not sure. You have to be sure that the deep, deep lesion that you are dealing with is ocular surface tumor neoplasia and it is not invasive before you start using topical therapy. When you do surgery, it is mandatory that you should get edge and base clearance. Then edge weight therapy should be based on histopathology and you should always screen for regional lymphoma metastasis and the use of target therapy when appropriate. Like this patient who has unilateral red eye, left eye red for several weeks, not responding to conservative treatment and looking like this on slit lamp evaluation or uh, magnified view, you can easily misdiagnose it as ocular surface cavus neoplasia unless you evert the lid and see. On eversion, you can see that this is the normal thickness of the eyelid, this is twice as thickened, posterior lid margin is rounded and pneumomene or gland orifices are all lost, there is loss of flashes. So this is pegetoid sebaceous gland carcinoma. This patient was started on topical interferon thinking that he was OSSM. So unless you are sure, you should not start on topical therapy. Then about this patient. This patient possibly has a deeper invasion. You cannot think of starting topical therapy unless we are clear about the depth. Like this patient has corneal OSSM, you can see that the stroma is already involved. This is the normal thickness of corneal stroma. In this area, stroma is thickened, so he cannot respond to topical therapy. So you should select out patients who are likely to respond to topical therapy. Second oncological principle is that you should have edge as well as base clearance. When we talk about surgery, the edge clearance is always 4 mm beyond the clinically determined margins. Clinically determined margins would include rose bengal staining and a good slit lamp evaluation. Beyond that, you have to have 4 mm margins. Along with that, you have to do alcohol-assisted keratoepithelectomy for the corneal epithelial component. Lamellar keratectomy and sclerectomy are generally not performed currently and cryotherapy to resection edge would be mandatory. Like how do you determine the base? Determination of the edge is easy. You can clearly see that this is the edge of the lesion that is stained with rose bengal. Beyond that, if you go about 4 mm, you are fine with the edge. But for the base, sometimes it's difficult on slit lamp evaluation. So you have to rely on imaging tools. Here you see that the lesion is limited only to the conjunctiva. That's the normal sclera and this bubbly layer is sterile. So your plane of dissection would be episclera in this patient. So you have to use imaging where appropriate. All these four patients have anterior segment invasion already. Clinically, they were not determined to have anterior segment invasion. Gonioscopy sometimes may not be possible or feasible. They may have a corneal scar like this precluding gonioscopy. So unless you do imaging, you will not be sure whether they have ciliary body, iris or anterior segment invasion. So imaging should be used in ocular surface neoplasia. Patients who have scleral involvement already cannot be treated with excision alone. These patients would need plaque brachytherapy either as a secondary procedure after excision of the lesion in flush with sclera. This is one more example of plaque brachytherapy done secondarily or primary plaque brachytherapy. Coming to target therapy. In conjunctival melanoma, the role of target therapy has been fairly well established. For every mutation, there are drugs that are earmarked. And this is already known that in this particular mutation, these drugs would be useful. And some of these drugs are currently available in India. And literature is flush with articles that are appearing on the use of topic on the use of target therapy in conjunctival tumors. This was an example of a melanoma with anterior orbital extension resolved following pembrolizumab and there are reports on nivolumab. This was our own patient who used nivolumab for regional lymph node metastasis. Incidentally, he also had diffuse ocular surface melanoma that had recurred from a pre-existing PAM. His eye was not treated when he was started on nivolumab and three months later, you can see that his conjunctiva has become completely clear. Thus, making a case for possible primary treatment with target therapy in patients who have a diffuse melanoma who may not be operable or in patients who don't, don't want surgery at all. As far as the orbital tumors are concerned, the oncological principles are complete excision of a well-circumscribed tumor irrespective of what you think is the diagnosis. So if the tumor is well-circumscribed and it is not related to any of the crucial structures in the orbit, then you should aim to completely excise it. There is no role for an incisional biopsy in 
in a well circumscribed tumor. But if a patient has an infiltrative tumor where you cannot completely excise without causing functional deficit, then you should do an incisional biopsy and the way to do incisional biopsy has also been established. So when you have a patient like this, this patient has rhabdomyosarcoma for sure, there is no doubt. I am just going to show an example here. We do biopsy from the superficial part of the tumor, mid zone and the deep zone. So we send all the three samples to the pathologist. We go past the epicenter of the tumor and do a biopsy. Let's see what the superficial biopsy showed in this patient. It showed only dense fibrosis. That is nothing but tissue reaction. So suppose somebody had done a biopsy only from this component of the tumor, he would get inflammation as the diagnosis. So you would start this patient on systemic steroids, right? But going to the mid zone and deeper biopsy, you have the diagnosis very clear that is embryonal rhabdomyosarcoma. So when you do biopsy, it is currently considered that you have to go past the epicenter or the center of the lesion and the depth is determined by CT scan or MRI which you already have. So how deep you go is absolutely determined by imaging. So the concepts in orbital biopsy are that you should do a multi-layer biopsy, superficial, intermediate and deep past the epicenter estimate the depth based on imaging and frozen section and imprint and intraoperative diagnosis may be critical. Like this patient who has the roof of the orbit missing by an infiltrative lesion which is located in the superior orbit. It could be anything. But our suspicion was eosinophilic granuloma because it was there for about four and a half, five months already. So if you go ahead and curate it or excise it, his dura will be damaged and he'll have CSF leak, right? So we do a biopsy from right from the safe center of the lesion and get an intraoperative diagnosis. Once the intraoperative diagnosis confirms that it is useful for the granuloma, you don't have to do any further surgery. Simply inject transdulone right within the lesion and three months later you can see partial remodeling. Six months later there is complete remodeling of the bone. So that is possible without any major surgical intervention in this patient. So intraoperative diagnosis definitely has a role in the management of orbital tumors. One more patient with eosinophilic granuloma where the same protocol was followed. So we should go ahead and get intraoperative diagnosis whenever we have to use it for the benefit of the patient. The next is histopathology guided adjuvant therapy. This was a patient of solitary fibrous tumor. So any patient who has solitary fibrous tumor with cellular atypia gets external beam radiation because they have a high chance of recurrence, local tumor recurrence, despite it being a benign or a borderline lesion. Especially patients of this sort where you can see that his intraorbital nerve is involved and we have excised the nerve along with it. But he still has a chance of local tumor recurrence because the intraorbital nerve obviously goes into the inferior orbital fissure. From there it could recur. So safely this patient should be treated with stereotactic radiation as an adjuvant measure. This is one more patient of solitary fibrous tumor who was treated with adjuvant radiotherapy. In orbital lymphoma you don't have to do gross excision. You see how nicely this patient has responded to rituximab monotherapy. He was a case of mild lymphoma. Now about multimodal treatment. In multimodal treatment the principle is that we do only a biopsy to confirm the diagnosis. Then we do neoadjuvant chemotherapy to reduce the size of the tumor. Then we do surgery. Then radiation and adjuvant chemotherapy. So this is a sequential treatment starting with biopsy and new adjuvant chemotherapy followed by surgery, radiation and adjuvant chemotherapy. That actually benefits the patient. In patients who have undergone primary orbital excentration, there is a high chance of metastasis and death. This is one example of a patient with adenoid cystic carcinoma of the lacrimal gland where multimodal protocol has become established. You can see reduction in the size of the tumor following new adjuvant chemotherapy. You can see that initially the tumor was even around the medial rectus. Now the medial rectus is fairly clear, superior oblique is also clear and the lesion is much consolidated for us to do an end block excision and that is following completion of treatment. Now what about patients who have bone invasion? This patient has clearly bone invasion. Earlier we would do excentration and orbitectomy, right? Now we don't have to do it. We simply follow the same protocol and you can see bone completely remodeled two and a half years after treatment. So with uh, multimodal treatment, the prognosis of adenoid cystic carcinoma of the lacrimal gland has improved. So has it improved for rhabdomyosarcoma and orbital retinoblastoma as well. So in oncological principles for an orbital surgeon, if you adhere to oncological principles with your obviously present good clinical and surgical skills already, you would be able to provide much better vision, eye and life salvage. Thank you, sir. Uh -huh.
for serial uh, monitoring of the lesion. Serial monitoring, monitoring of, of the lesion, lesion. Choroidal uh, levers. levers yeah. In choroidal levers, we use fundus photograph number one. Second, it is on base scan. If it's a posteriorly located lesion, we can use OCD.